Where to? Quick, speak! A lengthy chest of livery, I ran all the way. You were supposed to look after him. You were supposed to bring him back with you. You were supposed to never let him out of your sight! Ooh. One of us, Bill, a new boy, went out on his first job today. And I'm afraid he may say something <laughs> which will get us into trouble. <laughs> That's very likely. You're in trouble now, Fagin. Well, you see, if the job is up with us, it might be up with a good many more. And it would turn out rather worse for you than it would for me, my dear. Why, you all? Somebody must find out what he said or done. If he hasn't spoken yet, there's a chance we can get it back without suspicion. Well, that would be wonderful. He does it out of that house. Now, who's gonna go? It's gotta be done quiet. We don't want any fuss. The very thing, Nancy. Sweetheart, you're so good with the boy. <laughs> it's no good trying to with me. And just what do you mean by that, Luma? What do you say, Bo? I'm not a boy. Why can't you leave the boy alone? He won't do any harm. Why can't you leave him where he is? I get a chance of decent life. You'll get him back here, my girl. I just want to feel my hands around your foot. <laughs> Nancy, I'm sweetheart, dark. If he talks something, what would happen to us? Think what would happen to Bill? He'd get the drop, Nancy. The drop. You wouldn't let that happen to Bill, sweetheart, would you? Not to. Bill, not to your Bill. She'll go, Fagin. No, she won't, Fagin. Yes, she will, Fagin.
come along with some good things. I think you'll find a great improvement in the boy. That, sir, is what you need to decide. Thank you, Mrs. Bender. Mr. Bramble. How do you feel today, my boy? Very good, sir. Better than you always, sir. If you wish, dear boy. If you wish. Here's the doctor for you to see you. Well, you certainly look looking better, but you're still not sleeping well, are you? No, sir. I sleep very well, sir. Ah, that you so, but no doubt. Nightmares, eh? No, sir. I don't have any dreams. That's so, but you're hungry, aren't you? No, doctor. No, you're not hungry. Not thirsty, are you? If that boy is thirsty, I'll eat my head. Thirsty. Just as I expected. It's very natural to be thirsty. Do you give him a little tea? Yes, Doctor. Can I get up, Master? Say, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I think you can. And take a little fresh air. Don't give him too warm, Mrs. Bedwin. But be careful that you don't get me too cold. Certainly, Doctor. You'd be glad to be up again, Oliver. Do you want to leave, sir? But you can't wear your old ones. They fall like the rubbish. Very nice. He's a fine looking boy. Don't you think you're weak? Couldn't tell you. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy face boys and big face boys. And what you saw them about? Mealy. Where did he come from? Oh, didn't I tell you? He was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. But the shopping for the already happened. He was then released by the magistrate. I brought him here to make what amends I could. But I must confess, I found myself strangely attached to the child. Is he seeing my good friend? Yes, he has had a fever. What of that? Fevers are not particular to the people I am. Bad people have fevers sometimes, don't they? You stole your pocket handkerchief, didn't you? You still more, sir. What do you know of him? Nothing! Only that he's an orphan. And yet, it's strange. There's something that boy's face. I can't explain it, but somewhere I have seen it before. Sometime, a long time ago. Stop and nonsense. You imagine things. Yes, what is it? There's someone to see you, sir. Well, what does he want? Ah, yes, thank you. Now, I've got to give you some... Oh, excuse me. I wish to have some of these clothes return today. Why not send Oliver with them? Oh, sir, please let me do it, sir, please. Oh, um, oh, very well, my boy. Very well, if you wish. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. You give Mr. just some of these books and tell me to pay the four pounds that I owe him. Here's the money. No need to rush. But I shall expect you back here in 10 minutes. It's just down the road. She's very pretty, isn't she, sir? Yes. It's a portrait of my daughter, Agnes. I'll take the books then, sir. Yes, you take the books. Ha, you really don't expect me to come back to you. The new silk clothes on his back and all that money in his pocket. My dear, Mr. Brownwood, if he does, I'll eat my head. Dr. Brownwood, look at that portrait. Don't you see an extraordinary resemblance between my daughter, Agnes, and Oliver? Can't say I do. Well, ten minutes, Dr. Brownwood, when the boy returns, I think you'll see. Yes, Mr. Brownwood, ten minutes.
his little sister. He can't hide that. Make him come home real quick. Let's go! Let's go for this guy.
only thing she had of any worth, it was round her neck and <coughs> it was gold. Gold? Gold? This is this. This is it. The locket. She charged me to keep it safe <coughs> and trusted me. It was my belief she came from a rich family. They called him. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the one. Oliver. The one. He stole. He was between that point, Mr. Bumble. We must have been, ma'am. We must have been. Thank you. 
know you from somewhere. Well, my. Well, my dear. Oh, as hot as she can. I'm green. 